Classical Café with Ben McDougall on BBC Radio Cumbria. I said at the start of the show that we'd have a guest, and talking today here on the Classical Café is a baritone by the name of David Serrero, with whom I had a great chat over the phone from Paris. Well, David, it's great to speak to you, and listen, I'd like to start out with the thing I read telling me that you have performed for presidents. Firstly, who was it, and what was it like? Well, it's always, you know, a great honor, uh, not only, first of all, to perform this wonderful music, classical music, opera music, and actually all music, you know, uh, but to perform it in front of uh, such important people, such as President, I recently performed for uh, Mr. Nicolas Sarkozy, the former uh, French president, and uh, it was such an honor, you know, in, and I always think as the little kid that I was, that, you know, looking at all these big presidents and these big people and someday to, to, to sing for them, and I hope actually to sing for the Queen of England. That would be one of my biggest dreams. That would be very cool. You, you said it was something you've always wanted to do when you were younger, and everyone has a different story about how they discovered music. So what's your tale, and how did it lead you towards opera and then Broadway? Well, um, well you know, I... Um... I started to play uh, as a pianist. I started to play piano. And, you know, when you play piano, um, I was playing more pop music uh, on piano, not, not at all into classical or opera music at the beginning. And when you play piano, you have on the left hand, you have uh, the harmony, and on the right hand, you have the melody, right? Yeah. And so I was doing some roller skating when I was 12 or 13, and uh, I had had an accident and I broke my right ankle. So for like a week or two, I couldn't play uh, with the right hand. So since the music was for me uh, um, uh, like really a drug, you know, I mean, I, I needed to play three, four hours a day that there was, uh, otherwise I, I, I couldn't stay together, you know. <laughs> and so... So I couldn't play for two weeks, you know, the, the right hand. So I couldn't play the melody. So I started to sing the melody, yeah. you know. And this is how it all started. And then I started to do more pop music. And then I moved to New York and I started to do some theater. And people told me, well, you know, you sing, you, you act, so you should start to look into Broadway musicals. And I started, I went to see the Phantom of the Opera and I love you know, what they did with their, uh, it was not really operatic, but, you know, they, 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 they tried to, to, to illustrate the idea of an operatic voice. Yeah. And then I started to work with um, uh, so, uh, some people, some teachers, and they told me, you should go to see an opera. You should start to become an opera singer. And I thought, you know, like uh, all people who don't know about opera, that opera lasts uh, eight hours, <laughs> that singers are all uh, 500 pounds, you know. Uh, so <laughs> I, I had wrong idea, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of opera. And actually, you know, I, I jumped into a family, really a family, with open arms, you know. Yeah. And it was at the Metropolitan Opera, and it was Turandot. And I swear to you, Ben, right after I left the opera, I said, that's exactly what I want to do. And the next day, I went back to the box office of the Metropolitan Opera, and I said to the guy who sold me a ticket the night before, I told him, listen, I'm a regular singer, and I would like to become an opera singer. How do we become an opera singer? <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know, you know, and I didn't know where, where to go. And the guy said, well... Uh, I don't know. Let me let me let me ask. And he called the secretary of James Levine. No. <laughs> can you believe it? And they said, "Well, you can come into his uh, office." You say, "I said, okay." I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who he was at all. And then I, I went there and I saw, you know, even uh, uh, Plas Domingo. And then I couldn't. Uh, there was no. They said, "Can you sing an operatic aria?" And I said, "You know, I." 
I, I don't know any opera aria. I didn't even know uh, what it was an aria. And I said, well, I can sing. Uh, he said, can you sing Happy Birthday? <laughs> I said, sure. <laughs> so I sang Happy Birthday. <laughs> and, and, and then I started to study with teachers uh, directly from the Met and, and so on. And then I went to study all over the world and, and et cetera. So it all started really by an accident from by roller skating. <laughs> As stories go, that's pretty colourful. You are billed as a baritone, but um, help us out here. Can you explain the difference between your vocal type and that of, say, a tenor or a bass? Well, um, well baritone voice is basically the, um, what I call the, the, the centre voice of the... Um, of, of a man. You have the tenor voices who are the higher um, voice, and you have the bass who are the, who is the lower, the lowest voice, sorry. Um, and then, you know, it's uh, like a color. You have blue uh, color, but you have different type of blue. You have dark blue, you have a light blue, you have a, uh, several types, and you have different type of tenors, different type of baritone, and different type of, um, of bass. Um, my voice is actually very funny because um, at the beginning, um, since I was, uh, you know, more uh, uh, behaving like a tenor, they said, there's no way that you're a baritone. You are a tenor. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to work uh, really on my high notes and, and to think like I was a tenor. But at the same time, m- my voice was getting lower and lower and lower. So Basically, I, I try, I, I have this bass uh, uh, quality when I sing. You know, I can get this uh, uh, dark sound. I have the tessitura, I mean, the, the, the range of a baritone, but still I try to keep the brightness uh, of a tenor. And for some reason, uh, there is something into the tenor when they sing um, that is very popular, that they sing um, um, uh, more to the audience. And it comes from the generosity of the Italian language. You know, we always say amore, ciao. We always send. In Italian, we say spuntare la voce, like to throw the voice out. Yeah. You know? And the bass, they tend to make the voice more rounder to themselves, like, oh, you know, more into them, you know, like they close the sound into them, you know, like it's around in their mouth. Yeah. And, and, and so what I do is to, to, to sing like a tenor because I, before I became uh, uh, passionate about music, I was passionate by people. And I love people so much. I, I can tell you, Ben, I, I, I love people so much. And to sing for them, or to the piano when I started, was a way for me to express my love for people. You know? yeah. uh, uh, and so this, I tried modestly to give, because we are on the BBC, so I want to stay modest. Uh, <laughs> uh, but on other on, on radio, I said that I'm the best. Only on BBC, I tried to keep it low-key. But <laughs> I, 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 I tried, you know, to, 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 to give, you know, all my love to people, because they, they are singers who are much, much, much more uh, um, talented, that I'm, I'm modestly am, and, and they sing much better. So as long as I'm on stage, I want to give 200% of myself. Fair enough. You seem to um, cover a number of musical genres. We've, we've, we've discussed that already today, but you're pretty multi-talented, and if I'm not mistaken, you're also the creator of the London Musical Film Festival. So how did that come about, and is it something that we'll be seeing again in 2014? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I, I can do it every month. You know, it depends on uh, how much taxes I will have to pay this year in France. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I love musicals. You know, I love all music. Um, but what I like in, in musicals is that it, it's uh, kind of, um, um, you know, opera is, is very serious. We have uh, uh, some uh, opera like mostly by Mozart, by Rossini, who are kind of, uh, I should say, funny. You you know, uh, yeah. who are less on the dramatic side, you know. I mean, it's hard to, to have fun on uh, Othello, <laughs> you know. But um, but what I like into musical is that we can experience another type of, uh, 
of, um, of music. It's more a culture, um, a U.S. culture and a U.K. culture. Um, I, I love, by example, Men of La Mancha that I had the honor to perform the lead role of Don Quixote in the Paris production. Um, it's my uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite roles. And also, what I like is to act. You know, is the mix of theater, uh, of a speaking voice and um, and singing voice that we can find also in operetta. And the reason why I did this um, musical film festival, um, it came actually last year in Paris. I started it because there was no film festival dedicated to musical film. Is the the first one in the world entirely dedicated to this genre. And so in Paris, it became a, a, a big success because it's not too much the culture of the French, um, of this, uh, these American musicals. So I wanted them to be introduced to that, uh, to, to that genre. And it, it was so much successful that this year I decided to, to bring it to, to London so people can uh, discover old movies and new movies. And there is movies for um, all, um, all uh, ages and, and everyone. There is Dreamgirls, there is for kids Beauty and the Beast, you know, the Disney's version. Uh, uh, there is uh, Les Miserables, which actually just got released. Um, you know, many Men of La Mancha, many different, uh, um, many different films. Cool. And, well, you can find all the details of David's activities, both past and present, on his website, including everything we've covered. Uh, and the address there is www.davidserrero.com. That's www.davidserrero.com. And, David, you recently released an album called All I Care About Is Love. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to listen to a track mm-hmm. for that in just a moment. But... um. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Because it's not an opera album. Yeah, sure. It's kind of um, an album that is uh, what I call uh, my classics, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, there is opera that I sing very reg- regularly, but I also kind of um, uh, love to bring different um, uh, genres, you know, to my repertoire. And by bringing different genres, I bring also different audience. Um, you know, when I bring the people from the musicals, um, during the concert of musicals, I bring some Mozart, I bring some Verdi, I bring some Puccini. And people who had this um, wrong idea about opera, uh, then they can, uh, they, they can say, oh, who that was? Oh, that, that was opera. Well, that, that's actually very, very, very cool, you know? So this, uh, in, in this um, album, I, I put some um, uh, if I Were a Rich Man, which I sang over 600 times, one of my favorite songs. And actually, I recorded the French and the English uh, version. Uh, and In Time of Crisis is a song that I sing every night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And there is also the French version of uh, Men of La Mancha, which was adapted by uh, Jacques Brel. Uh, there is also All I Care About Is Love uh, by Chicago. There is a, a jazz version of um, uh, Almost Like Being In Love from Roger Summerstein musical uh, Brigadoon. Uh, there, there are also Russian songs. Um, and there is also a duet that I did with uh, German Jackson on Autumn Leaves, um, which is a beautiful jazz stand and a beautiful duo that we did together. He sings in English, I sing in French, and uh, our voices matched pretty well. And we did um, we did a tour together in France, which was uh, got also a nice uh, success. And uh, so I'm very excited about this album, and I'm preparing uh, an album 100% of Mozart Aria. Very nice. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, David. We will start out in just a moment with your duet with Jermaine Jackson. Oh, great! And then after that, we will move on to Sivuol Ballare from Mozart's Marriage of Figaro. Great! So, um, great, David, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you so much for, for li- listening to me. And the pianist that is playing with me on Sivuol Ballare is Cyprian Katsaris who is a, a very well-known uh, concertist, and uh, we, we play together a very, very nice concert. Thank you so much, Ben. It's such an honor to be on your radio show, and congratulations for everything, and BBC is very lucky to have you, and we also. <laughs> I'll make sure they know that. Best of luck. And um, we're going to play now the track Autumn Leaves, which was David's duet with Jermaine Jackson, two very different voices on one classic track.